Okay, now we turn to a totally different embryo than the frog, the chick. And we start with the chick egg, which is very different from the frog egg, very different from the sea urchin, amphioxus. The chick is a big egg. And you know, when you have your eggs in the morning, you have a chick egg, that's a single cell. The chick egg is a single cell. And if you crack open the chick egg, put it maybe in a dish, you'll see a little tiny white cap on top of the yolk, very small. That's where the nucleus is. That's where the non-yolky cytoplasm is. That's where the whole embryo will develop from, this little cap. And that's the nucleus in there. That little cap of non-yolky cytoplasm is called the blastodisc. And this is all the yolky cytoplasm. That's the yolk of your egg. Okay, cleavage in the chick is very different than cleavage in the frog, in sea urchin, amphioxus. It's what's called incomplete cleavage. This little blastodisc cleaves, but it, the cleavage planes cannot get through the yolk because the yolky cytoplasm is much too dense. So only cleavage occurs in that little blastodisc. So you get cleavage and this blastodisc is now cellular, and we call it the blastoderm. Then what happens is a space forms below the blastoderm and above the yolk. This space is called the subgerminal space. And what happens here in this blastoderm is that the cells start moving towards the center and form a mountain. The mountain is called the primitive streak. And this is what some people call the chick blastula. It's not a real blastula because in a real blastula, it has a cavity within the cells, in the center of the cellular layers. Here, the cavity is below the embryo proper, but still people call this a blastula. Some people don't. It's... Now what happens? Remember now, we had this building up of cells, making a mountain of cells in this little tiny blastoderm. And then imagine a stream going down this mountain. Remember, this is three-dimensional. So we have this mountain, and then imagine a stream going down the mountain. That stream is actually where the cells are going to move in during gastrulation. And that's basically what happens. But first, this blastoderm delaminates. It, it, it separates into two layers. The top layer is called the epiblast. The bottom layer is called the hypoblast. And then you get this real blastopore. That's, that's the blastopore of the, of the chick. And now cells move in from the outside to the inside. Remember, in the urchin and in amphioxus, the way cells got in was simply by punching in the ball. In the frog, remember, that cells creeped in, first dorsally, then laterally, then ventrally. In the chick, however, the cells are getting in through this blastopore 
that forms down the midline of this primitive streak. And this blastopore is called the primitive groove. So cells are moving in. The outer layer, which will stay outside, becomes mostly the epidermis and the neural material. Now you get the mesoderm moving in with a little endoderm actually also. And then this lower layer, the hypoblast, is, becomes mostly endoderm. So that's gastrulation in the chick. It's a little bit different. You can't even do anything with the yolk, it's so dense. So everything occurs in that little blastoderm, which will get bigger, it'll get bigger all right. Okay, so now what happens to the chick embryo? The chick embryo has to become a three-dimensional structure, which begins to look like a chick. And this is a nice little summary diagram of what's basically happening. And that is this chick embryo itself folds at the head, folds at the tail, folds laterally to form a three-dimensional cylinder which lifts itself above the yolk. And then other membranes start forming. Some membranes form at the head area, membranes form at the tail area that cover this chick embryo in what's like a, a double layered helmet. This fuses and then uh, you get this outer layer which becomes the chorion. The, the inner layer becomes the amnion, and this space here is called the amniotic cavity. And this is all what's called extra embryonic coelom. We get another bunch of membranes forming from material just outside of the embryo proper. So not only do we have this double layered helmet forming above the chick embryo. But now we get additional membranes which are in, engulfing the yolk. The yolk is in here. So these membranes are engulfing the yolk. And one of them is called the yolk sac. Then we have another membrane that develops which collects the wastes. And that membrane is called the allantoic sac or allantois. And as you can see by the colors, the amnion and the chorion are made up of extra embryonic ectoderm or epidermis and extra embryonic mesoderm. The red is the mesoderm, remember. The blue is the epidermis, extra embryonic epidermis or extra embryonic ectoderm, you can call it. The yolk sac now, you can see, is not blue and red, but it's yellow and red. And so is the allantois, yellow and red. That means they're composed of extra embryonic endoderm, the yellow, and extra embryonic mesoderm, the red. Okay, so we, we have our chick embryo that has lifted itself above the yolk. Now, if we make a cross section through this, we'll want to see what's going on in terms of more detail. And we're going to focus on neurulation and we're going to focus on the mesoderm divisions, how they develop. And 
also the endoderm actually <laughs> becomes the real gut that actually will fold as this whole thing is 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 moving above the yolk. So look, just like in the frog, we have the neural plate here or prospective neural tube, the prospective epidermis here, and we have the endoderm and we have the mesoderm. We call those mesoderm and endoderm because they're not prospective anymore. They have separated. But the Perspective epidermis has not separated yet from the perspective neural tube. That's why we always call it still at this stage until we get down here. At this stage, this is still perspective epidermis. This is still perspective neural tube. Or you can, you can call this the neural plate. So notice what's happening is that the neural plate is folding just like in the frog. Finally, it makes a complete circle and it drops below the surface. And remember, this is now a elongated cylinder. This is just a section through. This is just a section through this cylinder. So now we have the fully formed neural tube, which is a tube. And we have the notochord, which is a cartilaginous rod below the tube, and now we have the rest of the mesoderm that's starting to separate into the important mesodermal components, the somite, which we mentioned gives rise to muscles of the back, the vertebral column, the dorsal dermis, etc. We have the mesomere or the intermediate mesoderm, which gives rise to the kidneys and the gonads. And we have the hypomere, which consists of two components, the somatic mesoderm in contact with the epidermis and the splanchnic mesoderm in contact with the endoderm. And that actually split. This piece here that, that will form that has split. And the space that's created as a result of the splitting of this prospective hypomere is the coelom, the body cavity. So, you know, we mentioned just like in the frog, we, we get all sorts of structures we know of that are uh, developing from the uh, different components of the hypomere, the heart from the splanchnic mesoderm, uh, limb buds, etc., from the somatic mesoderm. So basically what we have here is a summary of the early chick development and remember that notochord, just like in the frog, sends messages, sends inducers up to the overlying neural material that tell it to form neural structures. And these are inducers that have been partially characterized. Uh, they're proteins, and it's uh, it's exciting. It's an exciting area because. Um, you know, nowadays, let's say if somebody gets paralyzed, you really can't repair that, uh, that spinal column and they remain paralyzed. But imagine if you could um, induce the formation of new, fresh spinal cord material. You know, there are labs all over the world that are trying to isolate these inducers so that's basically an overview of the early developing chick embryo. And when we move on to the slides, you'll see a lot of this. And I think this will give you a good idea of what the slides are going to be all about. <laughs>